Thanks for <coughs> thanks for the intro. So, hello everyone. My name is Jun Gong. I'm a fourth year PhD student from X Discovery Lab at Dartmouth College. Today, I'm going to talk about intuitive contact-based object-driven interactions with inductive sensing. This work was in collaboration with Xin, Teddy, Josh, and my advisor Xin Dongyan. Before I talk about motivation and related work, first of all, I just want to quickly show you what is Indutivo and how Indutivo works. So Indutivo is a contact-based inductive sensing technology for contextual interactions. It uses the sensing coils to recognize conductive objects and their individual movements when you place this object against the sensor. In this work, we chose smartwatch as the platform to demonstrate its unique sensing capabilities. So here's a short demo showing what we can do with Indutivo. User can tap the utensil to trigger a fitness app and a hinge to record the calories. Remove it to confirm the number. I will talk more details about implementation and applications later in this talk, but before that, let's get back to the motivation. Small wearables like smart watches or IoT devices like Amazon Echo or Nest thermostats are generally difficult to input due to their small form factors and lack of effective input modalities. Just like smartwatch as an example, as you can see here, sometimes it is hard for us to find the app we want or to control it precisely. To solve this, we propose to use contextual interactions based on object recognition and manipulation to, to enrich the input modalities of these devices. Our work was inspired by many previous work that has been done to enrich the interactions based on object recognition and manipulation. So next, I'm going to show you several examples. EMSMs recognize electrical objects via electromagnetic signals enable robust, untouched object recognition. So ID sense instrument the objects with the passive RFID tags to classify the object motion events. And Y-band recognize objects that can generate mechanical vibrations by boosting the sampling rate of an existing accelerometer inside the smartwatch. And RadarCat uses multi-channel radar signals to, recogni re to recognize electrical or non-electrical objects. And our approach is different in that it can not only recognize the conductive objects, but it is also capable of sensing the object lateral movements precisely. So next, let me explain how Indutivo works. Our sensing system consists of an LC tank including an inductor, or say the sensing coil, and a capacitor. So the LC tank is connected to an inductance sensor that can track the inductance wirings. When a conductive object comes within the proximity of the, our sensing coil, a circulating current induces an electric, electromagnetic field coupling between the sensing coil and the conductive object. This coupling will induce another circulating current called eddy current on the surface of the conductive object. In turn, the induced eddy current will generate its own electromagnetic field, which opposes the original field generated by the inductor. Objects in different resistivity, size, and shape will have different coupling effects, which can be shown in the form of a slight shift of the inductance of the LC tank. And this is what we use to distinguish different conductive objects. So with this sensing principle in mind, the key to the success of using inductive sensing is the design of a sensing coil because it affects the sensitivity, sensing range, recognition, and tracking accuracy. So the first thing we need to consider is the coil shape. In principle, the coil can be made into any shape, but the most common ones are circle, square, hexagon, and octagon. The circular, the circular coil has the best quality factor and the lowest serious resistance, allowing the largest sensing distance. However, the trade-off is the sensor value is not that linear proportional to the distance between the target and the sensing coil. So in this work, in order to maximize the sensing distance to support the hinge movement that I have already shown in the demo at the beginning, we chose to use circular coil. And second, we also need to consider the coil size and arrangement. Our goal is to fit the sensing coils around the side of a smartwatch, usually a rectangular region of 10 by 40 millimeters. Larger coils provide longer sensing distance. However, an array of small but clustered coils can better sense the size, shape, and lateral movements of an object because we will have more data channels. 
So in order to balance the sensing distance and the number of data channels we have, we decided to use an array of five coils in our final design. So last but not least, coil inductance is also an important factor in our design process. In principle, coils with lower inductance can increase the sensitivity of the system. Due to time limit, I won't go into the details about how we calculate the inductance and how it helps us to decide the number of turns and the layer of the sensing coils. So if you are interested, please refer to our paper for more details. And here's our prototype. We place the carefully designed sensing coil array on the side of a smartwatch. The coils are connected to an inductance sensing chip from Texas Instruments, which can capture the inductance wirings of these coils. We use a two-inch TFT display to provide visual feedback to our users. So next I'm going to discuss how to use this inductive prototype to perform real-time object recognition. So first of all, we need to collect inductance reference footprint of each object to build our database. The reference footprint is a curved representation of one-dimensional continuous inductance values across the object contact area. So for each object, we scan it by hand to obtain its inductance reference footprint, just like this image. So the real-time object recognition was implemented by comparing the sensing data with this pre-collected database. The closest match is our result. We classify the object that can be detected into four categories. First of all, small conductive object whose contact, whose contact area is smaller than a sensing coil, like dying. So next I'm going to show you a video demo. The detected item name will be shown in the middle of the display. And the bars below will show the raw values of each sensing coil. Dying, adapter, a bundle clip, USB cable, candy box, and a keychain. And the next category is large conductive object whose contact area is larger than the sensor. Some of them are metallic, while others are electronic devices with building metallic components like knife, scissors, mental credit card, Kindle, Nexus form, iPhone front and back. So for some of the conductive objects, we also try to attach a strip of copper tape to create a unique reference for print so that the same object can be used for different purposes. Knife with copper tape, scissors with copper tape, and a candy box with the copper tape. So in a, to enable non-conductive object sensing, we instrument them using the copper tape with different design patterns so that this can be distinguished by the sensor. As you can see here, the system can successfully identify different books with different copper tape patterns. To validate the system accuracy and robustness, we ran a 10 participant user study. Each participant was asked to type 20 strip objects against the sensor for five times. The objects were assigned randomly into five locations, living room, kitchen, computer desk, parking space outside the building, and inside the running car, so that we can test if the system is robust on the different environmental settings. And we used a reference database collected by one volunteer one week ago before the study to evaluate the data. Note that this volunteer was not recruited again in the study, and it turns out that our system can achieve an overall accuracy of 95.8%, which is very promising considering no per-user calibration, no user training, and a considerable time separation between the experiment and when the reference data was collected. Besides the object recognition, Indutivo also supports precise one-dimensional object manipulation, including sliding, hinging, and rotation. After the object is typed and predicted, its sliding movement can be detected by sensing the shift of the position of its corresponding reference footprint over the sensors. In the following demo video, the purple curve shows the reference footprint, and the bars on the bottom shows the raw sensor values. The predicted location is shown on the right side of the smartwatch. So here's a demo. A dime is detected and tracked. To measure the sliding accuracy, we randomly pick one object from each category, including dime, credit card, instrumented knife, and instrumented book three. 
We ask one participant to wear the device and slide the object within 40 millimeters for three times. The participant stop every two millimeters and record the predicted distance and the ground truth. So here are the results of four tested objects. The x-axis shows different objects, while the y-axis shows the average error distance. Across all objects, the average error distance is less than one millimeters. And among these four objects, mental credit card has the lowest accuracy. It might be because it's unbalanced material distribution. Unlike sliding for sensing hinging, we need to collect another database of the, of the footprint references by hinging different objects. The hinging angle can be estimated by comparing the raw sensor values with the hinging reference footprints in the database. So here's a demo video tracking the hinging angle of an instrumented knife. So using a similar, using a similar evaluation like sliding, here are the results. The x-axis also shows different objects, while the y-axis shows average error degree. Across these three objects, the average error degree is about 1.64 degrees. Most of the errors comes from the angle away from the sensor. Instrumented knife has the best performance since the copper tape can be sensed even when it is far away from the sensor. Besides the sliding and hinging, Indutivo also supports rotation. To enable rotation, we place a strip of copper tape around the barrel of a bottle cap. The width of the copper tape gradually increases to allow the sensor to pick up the cap's orientation based on strength of the signal. Here, we support eight rotational directions. And a similar evaluation shows the system that can retrieve an average classification accuracy of 93%. And here's a demo. To demonstrate the sensing capabilities enabled by Indutivo, we built four demo applications. As you can see here, a bottle cap can be used to launch an aircraft game and used as a rotating controller. In a copy room, while waiting for a document to print, Typing a binder clip can launch a brick brick game and use it as a sliding controller. So typing a dime on a sensor at different locations can trigger the corresponding actions like play or pause. This helps to avoid a finger occluding the screen or force input from a hand. While having a meal, this guy wants to record the calories in a fitness app, but his finger is dirty. A utensil can be used to quickly launch the fitness app and record the calories with hinging. And that's for the demo applications. So next, I will discuss the future work. So for the future work, we believe inductive sensing has great potential beyond the smartwatches, especially for those small and input-limited devices. For example, inductive sensing can also be added on smart rings, supporting contextual input by simply touching on different objects. And with inductive sensing, users can also quickly switch between different modes of a digital clock by using different objects and precisely adjust the corresponding values like time by manipulating the object. For the IoT devices like Amazon Echo, different objects can quickly trigger different functions and are all apps. So with that, I would like to conclude our work with three take home messages. So first of all, we propose a contact-based inductive sensing technology for contextual interactions. And second, our, technology, our technique can recognize conductive objects as well as their individual movements, including sliding, hinging, and rotation. Third, our approach can retrieve 95.8% classification accuracy with 23 daily objects and precise one-dimensional tracking. So that's all I want to share about for today, and I'm more than happy to take any questions. Thank you.
We have time for uh, three or four questions, so uh, take it away. Hi, Dan Ashbrook, University of Copenhagen. I'm curious what the limitations are on coil size. Could you engineer it and have twice as many coils? Could you have them in two dimensions? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, we can. So basically this is what, I'm, uh, what I have discussed in the uh, uh, coil design section. So basically mm -hmm. we, can, we can add as many as coils on the, on the, on the regular, yeah. Yeah. on the rectangular region of the smartwatch. So basically right now the limitation is the space of the smartwatch is only about 10, 10 mm -hmm. millimeters by 40 millimeters uh, region. So we need to consider the sensing distance the balance between the sensing distance and the data channels we have. If we add more uh, coils into that, we can have more data channels. But if we only have, but but the coils will be too small, and the sensing distance will be uh, will be decreased. Mm -hmm. So basically, in order to support those uh, hinge movement, mm -hmm. because we need a larger uh, sensing distance, so we we kind of pick a balanced design. So right now we only use uh, one array of the sensing coil. And we can definitely try more uh, different combinations, but we need to consider the, it depends on our design, uh, design requirements. Right. Yeah. So you could theoretically have one larger coil to sense far away and a bunch of smaller coils to get higher resolution. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool, thanks. So I have a question. Um, have you, did you encounter any, um, difficulties with, you know, um, like, for example, the hand uh, occluding on the uh, inductive sensors. So is there any, like, false triggers happening there? Uh, so basically, uh, right now, the inductive sensor is only sensitive to the, uh, to the uh, conductive object, like, uh, most, mostly it's me metallic objects. So basically, the, when you flex the hand, this won't no trigger effect. anything. Yeah. Okay, great. Other questions? Okay, we got one more. Hi, Clement, University of Copenhagen. Uh, I'm, I was wondering how is it with power consumption? Would you have any estimates? How does it compare to some of the related work you presented? Uh, so so we, we did measure the uh, power consumption of the system. I think, I don't remember the, the number exactly. It's about 100 milliwatts. But this is only because we, we just used the off-shelf, off-the-shelf, the, off the uh, inductive sensing trip. So we did not do any optimizations on the power consumption or any stuff. So, this sensing technique can be definitely uh, uh, optimized for the, for the power consumptions. Yeah. Let's thank our speaker one more time.